Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Moody's Tire and Auto Football Extra, week one from the Williamson Herald. I'm sports editor Joe Williams and our videographer, all-around reporter extraordinaire, <laughs> Charles Pulliam. Partner, welcome first to yeah, the Williamson yeah. Herald. You've done some great work already. And secondly, welcome to week one in football in Middle Tennessee. Man, it has been a fun, fun look at it so far here. We've been able to do a lot, lots of great games to open uh, the season up last week, and we got some fun ones coming. Should be good. The county went 7-2 and two last week uh, to open up. Uh, Franklin had the week off. The other nine teams played. I'll take 7-2. and two. Now, pretty much everybody coming back to action uh, this week. The big game, just how good is Franklin? They open up with Clarksville Northeast, who fell victim last week to Centennial in a game i got to tell you, I covered that one, and I really expected something much, much closer. Yes, yes, definitely. I, I was able to check out that second half as well, and it was just something Centennial had pieces clicking there. And he saw a lot of big plays there from Manuel Hall coming down the stretch, finding his openings. Once he gets that ball downfield, oh. that guy is gone. Yeah. yeah. Deion Sanders, understand, uh, rated in the last couple of days one of the top 150 running backs in the country. He's in the backfield. Uh, Centennial has a couple of uh, injury issues that will help him when they come back. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But the thing that I noticed last week, and I think will be a big plus for these Rebels, Clarksville Northeast brings in a very, very big offensive line. Now, the interesting part to that is the Centennial kids were coming off the field nine minutes into the game. Still got about three minutes left going first quarter saying they're done. Mm -hmm. They're done. The heat wore them out. Charles, we've had a, a pretty decently cool summer. Mm -hmm. And just as Charles Rathbone at Page <laughs> said in our preseason pick, he said, I'm worried that opening night it's going to be hot. And boy, did he call that one. Definitely. And it's not going to lighten up either, too. Forecasted for 95 degrees to start here on Friday night. Another big night. But yeah, you talk about that centennial, that front four. I mean, those are some big fellas out there. And Coach Webb here trying to uh, work around that for sure. The other thing I noticed last week, I did not as, I won't say decimated, but as hurt as the Centennial defensive line was, they seemed to not miss a beat. Now, they, a lot of these kids uh, for Northeast going both ways, but they never could get anything going. They broke one play all night, basically against the twos, uh, to go down 41-7. I know that Coach Donnie Webb's a little bit worried, but he's a defensive master. And uh, Josh Philby is back and a couple of those kids. I, I don't want to build this up and make this sound like a cakewalk, but I'm feeling pretty, if, if I'm a Franklin Rebel, I'm feeling pretty good about tonight. Mm -hmm. And it'll be a great test for that defense, actually, too. Lost some key players from last season. But you go into last season, and they really, uh, they didn't have the names ready. They just wanted guys to step up. Coach said he's got some of those guys lined up that are going to come in and, and you know, make an impact. And so he's ready to see what they could do. I think one of the things they did get a lot of kids, a lot of playing time last year. I think that's going to help them out mm -hmm. uh, as they go on. You know, there's a positive and negative to being off in week zero because in the old days there was no week zero. Everybody played 10 weeks straight. Mm -hmm. uh, the Rebels got an extra week to prepare and to see what happens and got a chance to see some other teams last week. The catch to it is they don't get another breather. Once they start, they've got to go. Yep, yep. And that's, uh, it, we talked to Coach Webb here earlier. He was talking about how he's kind of a trend for him now, two years in a row taking the opening yeah. week off. Last year was a big thing for him because they had a lot of new things they were trying to work into the system. But this year they, they were at that Centennial Northeast game. And, I mean, it oh, yeah. Was, they were itching to play. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, not only itching to play, but they were making lots of yeah. notes set up, on, <laughs> set up on the visitor side, way up high. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I guess they thought they were hidden, but no, 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 you're going to get found out. Mm -hmm. uh, question to be found out now is, too, not only Franklin, but across Mac at you here, BGA off to a good 1-0 start, beat the uh, Coffee County rather well. Now, though, they got to go to Father Ryan. Now, Father Ryan beat them last year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Father Ryan in Division II, a Class 2A team. BGA in Division II, a Class A team. Um, most folks will tell you that alone says BGA should get beat. Yep. Watch Father Ryan in a scrimmage earlier this year. Their defense is really, really very good. Uh, but BGA is no slouch either. No, no. And you go back to that game last year. It was a 24-7 loss for them. But this year, it's... It's, they, they've done this. This will be the 12th year in a row these two teams have met. They know each other. They know what's going on. Um, Father Ryan able to get past Overton last week, which was a, a down-to-the-wire game. Yes, uh, scored in the final 30 seconds, I believe. So BGA coming in looking to keep that high scoring going. Uh, quarterback there, Clay, really came on big there. Beat through threw, what, five touchdowns last five week? Five touchdowns. It's 340, 340 yards? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. See, the, the, real, the funny part about that is last year, Beathard got hurt. 
uh, Grosnover stepped in, and you just kind of wondered where to go. They never said a whole lot about Clay or what happened, mm -hmm. and you, you may have gotten the thought that he wasn't going to be maybe ready. No, no, he's ready. Uh, kid's ready in spades, actually. I mean, you mm -hmm. throw five the first week. Now he's got to go to Father Ryan and do that. The Irish may be a little bit high. It's been a long time since mm -hmm. they beat Overton, and they're – they're longtime rivals in Nashville. They're part of the old NIL, the uh, Nashville Interscholastic League. Okay. And uh, the fact that Father Ryan moved out just off Franklin Road, something that you can just about throw a rock between these two campuses now. So last week was really, really huge for them. I'm hoping they're a little bit high and maybe overlooking BGA coming in. Uh, BGA, I think, still has a good chance to win this ballgame, though. Definitely. And one of the biggest things that uh, Rock at BGA was talking about was. Uh, Winning the turnover battle, yeah. they forced five turnovers against Coffee County, and they they want to keep that keep that momentum going, especially. And when you got a tough team like Father Ryan, you gotta you gotta protect the ball. Yeah, it's one of the things you'll see though. If they force five last week, when you can get on a roll, if you can mm -hmm. force one and get it, and yep. then force another one to get it, it just kind of snowballs. Good things start to happen. Uh, of course, on the other hand, if you're the one putting the ball on the ground, it can snowball against you too. Now, speaking of uh, Overton playing Father Ryan last week, they will be hosting Centennial this week. And I got to tell you, that's going to be a mad bunch of cats. The Bobcats are not going to be a happy group. They went 10-0 yeah. and 0 in the regular season last year. They wanted to keep the string going, um, and they didn't. They've lost to their, their crosstown rivals. They know Centennial is coming. Uh, they beat Centennial pretty handily last year. So you know Brian Rector and the kids are thinking it's time to get even. I think that may be the clash of the night. Yes, that's going to be a fun one to watch. We'll be definitely covering that one. I want to see some of those footage. Oh, yeah. Uh, as uh, it was, you know, I, I still I go back to Hall and getting those big plays. That's going to be the focus for Overton really coming in there, trying to deny him those big plays because that's what Centennial loves, getting things going like that, along with Sanders as well, breaking through the middle. Those are two fun guys to watch, but if they get it going, they get it going. Well, Hall's such a threat because not only can you throw to him, if he gets free, he's gone. Mm -hmm. And he's got a unique, he's just got a nose for finding a hole. But they've started running much more on, on a jet sweep, and he just, he just shows his speed. He gets to the corner, he accelerates, and you go, wow, where did that come from? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's going to be a fun one. I'm looking forward to that. That ought to be good. Now, Overton uh, will come with their own uh, potential All State running back, mm -hmm. who is just a big, big bruiser. And I mean, he just ran crazy last year. I guarantee you that the defensive coaches at Centennial have a plan. Now, the catch to that is the defense at Centennial is a little bit hurt right now. Uh, walked in last week to find uh, Terrell Dotson on crutches and went, you've got to be kidding mm -hmm. me. I mean, this is, a, this is a standout linebacker. He's a junior. Uh, there were several college coaches come, expected to come watch him last week, and he had to call and go, I'm not going to be there. No. Uh, a, a surgical repair of a small, small tear of, of, of an MCL and they're talking about him being back in two weeks. Wow. He's see, determined. Fast one. We saw him on yeah. crutches here, but he's the kind of player, just an all-around athlete. I could see him doing that, but you don't want to force those things. Yeah. And uh, But, yeah, he's going to be a key component. Still not there, so that's something Centennial has to look forward to maybe mid-season here where they're going to get him really rolling again. Well, he's pretty tough. He, uh, he, he even admitted <laughs> that, you know, 10 days out, he's already got a 120-degree flight. Uh, twist or bend oh, on that knee yeah, yeah. you know the the last time i had arthroscopic surgery it took me six weeks to get to 80 so you know it's i know but I know. wow i mean this kid's something else bad part is though in the first half last week they also saw their their standout defensive tackle bryce whitman come out with a shoulder he spent the rest of the game on the sidelines with an ice bag on it and uh, their their sophomore lineman nose guard i think he's playing either guard or tackle on mm -hmm. offense uh, eli katina mm -hmm. came out on crutches Ice on the knee and talked to his parents on Saturday. They were going to go for a, for an MRI on Monday. I have not heard the results, but okay. the fact of the matter is that's three pretty key people on that Centennial defense. It's going to be tough to replace, although it didn't look like they missed anything last week when they came out. They were able to fill the holes pretty quickly there, and that's good, but uh, going to be missing some of those guys. You want that. You want those guys right from the start like that. Always tough to overcome injuries. You know, looking in at other injuries here too, uh, Summit's running, running back, Cody Campbell. Heard he had a broken ankle there against Ow. Spring Hill. So he's actually done for the season. They expect him back for baseball. He's a big baseball player there, right. too, as well. And also Brentwood Academy, their quarterback, uh, Dawson Knox, I believe. He's out, broken ankle as well. He might make it, according to uh, reports. He might be able to make it for the, the regular season finale. But 
That's an ankle. Oh. Yeah, B.A. goes down to uh, to MUS, Memphis University School, gets a big win last week, but it sounds like it was a costly win. Mm -hmm. uh, Knox was expected to fall right into the into the form of the last couple, three quarterbacks that just kind of come in for a year, two years. This will be a senior season. Start throwing the ball and going to college and play. That is a mm -hmm. tough break for that young man. Good kid. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to keep an eye on what happens there. Also, uh, several other games involving county schools and you know, nobody is really starting a district schedule yet, uh, except for Fairview. Mm -hmm. Fairview's got a big game. They got to go to Camden after taking care of Cheatham County last week on the road, so they're going to burn that one up. Brentwood Academy's got to go down to Liberty Tech, who was beaten last week, and they're not going to be happy campers. So they got to go all the way to Jackson yeah. for yeah. that one. Um, you've also got uh, Clarksville hosting Ravenwood. Mm -hmm. They got to go all the way to Clarksville. Yeah, Clarksville Northeast coming down here. Uh, Independence takes on Marshall County, who won their first game of the year last year. That might be a pretty good battle. It's just a little bit everywhere. Page, I think, Page and Summit are playing tomorrow yes, night. Yes, yes. Or Friday night, and that, yeah. ought to, that you know, they're like neighborhood yeah. rivals because yeah. when Summit opened, they got some from Independence and some from Page. Yep. Yeah. That should be another good ball game. I know, and you know, looking at some of those away games, some of the schedules here tough for you know Independence with some traveling there. Fairview, four of their first six games yeah. on the road. That is some some tough schedule. and some but distance it pays too. Off. Oh yeah, and some pays distance. Off. You get four home games in a row to close out the season, but uh, we'll see how they do on the road. Yeah, yeah, we'll see, and we'll see what happens with the schedules next year. You know, Fairview's in a position to where, yeah, they're having to go west a bunch if the when the new classification plan starts Franklin Ravenwood will not have these natural rivals that they've had before in the Centennials and the Brentwoods and the Independences uh, the, the county because they're going to have to be playing in that super 32 category super six group uh, but what happens you wind up with Page and Fairview looking at going up on the the plateau east to have to play mm -hmm. uh, and some of these some of our what will be 5A schools Moving around in a lot of different directions. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. But we can't worry about that now. Right now, we're worried about week one. We haven't made any predictions. Oh, man. And that's probably a smart move this week. <laughs> that's what I was going for, actually. I was going to try to <laughs> hide away from those. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know what? We're, we're honest enough to say, no, we're not going there this week. Mm, yeah. But it ought to be good. Key games we'll be watching tomorrow night. Clarksville Northeast coming to Franklin for the opener for the Rebels. We'll also be keeping a good eye on the BGA Father Ryan game in Nashville and also the Centennial Overton game. Cougars got to go up there. Uh, of course, we'll have reports and results from all the games involving county teams, but those are the ones we're kind of highlighting for tomorrow night. I guess we've kind of broken that fourth <laughs> wall there, the paper wall, yep. as we shoot this on Thursday. You'll see it on Friday. On Friday night, I got to get back in the in the mood <laughs> in, in the mode of saying Friday night all the time. <laughs> Oh, it's been a while. It's it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to another big week here, and hopefully it's not too hot out. Jeez. <laughs> well, he handles it better because he's skinnier. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. That's going to wrap up our very first Moody's Tire and Auto Football Extra. For Charles Pulliam, I'm Joe Williams. Thank you so much for joining us, and keep reading the Williamson Herald.